Okay, so this is my final milestone video for Computational Media 265, Procedural Content Generation. Uh, I will be showing the final state of the game uh, that I've been working on uh, this quarter, and in particular, some of the procedural techniques uh, used for this project. Uh, so let's take a look. Uh, this game uh, began uh, using the Unity 2D Essential Training Tutorial. Um, by Jesse Freeman at uh, lynda.com so all the art um, and the basic game architecture was taken from that uh, tutorial and then I added the um, modified gameplay mechanics and added the procedural um, uh, techniques uh, for the game um, so let's take a look So this is an infinite runner game, sort of like uh, Cannonball or Bit Trip Runner. Um, in particular, uh, and and this uh, infinite runner game, obs and instead of moving platforms, um, obstacles are instead uh, spawned, uh, for which the player must um, try to avoid by jumping over them. Um, the game speeds up as the the game timer goes up, um, so the difficulty of the game will increase as the player progresses. Um, when the player is knocked off screen, uh, the game is reset, and the best time up to that point is recorded. So let's take a look at the game and some of the mechanics. So here we have uh, our player, and you got to see a little knockback effect from the zombie. Um, he's running along, so um, basically the player in this game, um, although it's it's given the effect of running um, from the game's point of view, uh, the player is actually uh, has a absolute velocity of zero, whereas the um, background and all the objects in the game are actually moving towards him, so they have a velocity. Uh, the only exception to that is when um, the player gets knocked back, then uh, there's a knockback effect that uh, gives him a that applies a force to him in the opposite in the direction that the uh, object struck him, and then when the player jumps, uh, he will also uh, gain a little bit of forward momentum, um, and you can see that here when. Uh, so I get knocked back a little bit, and as I jump forward, I gain a little bit more momentum. But I, if I stood still, um, otherwise, then uh, he'll remain stationary from the game's point of view. Um, a little bit more about the mechanics. So, um, so it's starting to speed up a little bit. Um, as the game gets more uh, speeds along more and more then it becomes more difficult um, the knockback effect begins to uh, be less helpful um, and can actually uh, knock you off um, yeah so the zombies in particular um, will uh, they happen to move faster than the other obstacles in the game and so as the game gets sufficiently fast then um, the possibility of being able to recover from being knocked back uh, becomes less and less um, possible um, so just some information about this game uh, so it was built using unity 2d um, and that makes use of the of Unity's built-in physics engine. So when you saw the the player getting knocked back, that's actually um, so all the all the game objects have uh, a rigid body 2D, which in Unity's um, the way Unity uh, treats that is that uh, basically objects are given a bounding box that um, when they come in contact with other objects uh, there's a collision uh, calculation that's done um, and so uh, in this game since the 
the objects are moving towards the player um, when they happen to enter when they happen to collide then a particular force is, is placed on the player and that will uh, give him uh, basically a negative velocity for a short amount of time um, and knocks them up a little bit um, so that it they aren't dragged across the ground essentially um, and that's to give uh, I found that to be a, a the best way to uh, to have the player be able to uh, be hit by an object and still keep playing um, and not have basically be dragged along um, if there wasn't uh, that knockback effect. Um, so let's see the game a little bit more. Um, one of the limitations of the knockback effect as it's currently implemented um, and could probably use some more work is that uh, what you just saw uh, a little earlier um, when I hit a zombie, I'll do that again. So, if you'll notice, let's see if I can get ahead a little bit. Okay. So, when I jump and and run into an object, then there's a little bit of a um, what shall I say? So be when I first implemented this, the knockback effect would essentially uh, do a, a jump but in the opposite direction. And so uh, I found that to be a little too implausible and not conducive to good gameplay. Um, so the, the player would actually fly back and uh, depending on how fast it was going then there would have been no way to recover so I was able to dampen uh, the the knockback effect while jumping a little bit but like you just saw um, if you run into an object with a knockback effect then uh, they will be knocked back slightly but not enough to uh, basically be able to recover and so that's a limitation um, at the moment so uh, in that case it it worked um, not too bad but once it starts to get a little bit faster so as you can see there um, for the zombies it seems that uh, the knockback effect unless you happen to run right into them then jumping and knocking in, into them uh, will probably lead to the player being pushed off screen. Um, another detail um, to keep in mind is one, one strategy in, in the game is um, being able to jump on something's head like you just saw to come back a little bit so it gives you some distance between you and the object but of course as you start jumping forward then you're gaining more you're gaining a little bit um, of forward velocity and that uh, puts you uh, more and more towards the middle of the screen so it gives you a little less time to um, react. So the the major uh, point of this uh, project and, and the thing that I added um, was to give this a, a dynamic difficulty adjustment so that in particular um, that's a procedural technique um, that adjusts the difficulty of the game um, as the player plays along. So in this particular case, um, as you can see, objects are starting to move a, a little bit faster, um, and there's a maximum threshold, So, uh, but you'll probably uh, get pushed off screen well before then, but it gives the game um, uh, an upper limit so that uh, things don't get too uh, out of control um, and remains more or less playable. Um, so <clears throat> another thing to keep in mind is that um, so we have a timer and that that tracks uh, the game's progress and uh, it's able to uh, 
save that time, and uh, if that happens to be better than the best uh, time currently recorded, then it'll then replace that. Um, some of the uh, information about the the game architecture. So the game essentially works as follows. So the game begins um, with a screen like this, um, asking you to press any button. So as soon as a button is pressed, then uh, a player um, prefab is created and dropped into the middle of the scene. So in Unity, uh, it's Unity is basically broken up into scenes, and that uh, basically gives you the idea that um, so in a game scene, this is the actual playable part. Um, another scene may uh, be a tile editor in which uh, an actual game level may be used to develop in, and then you would migrate migrate that over into the game scene itself um, so that you can actually play it. So <clears throat> our game player is dropped into the scene. Then there's um, an object spawner that exists just uh, to the side of where the main camera is looking at. So our camera right now is fixed on um, the player and then uh, we are able to achieve um, a, a motion or a scrolling effect by essentially giving the foreground a uh, slightly faster velocity than the background. So they're both moving along and then the object spawner um, randomly spawns uh, objects at set intervals that um, will cycle through the list of objects um, and uh, as soon as the object moves across the screen and gets far enough to the left then um, the either that object is either recycled or destroyed <clears throat> and that depends on the number of objects that are currently in the game. So occasionally it'll it'll throw a zombie out, um, and the zombie is just there to sort of mix up mix things up a little bit in the gameplay to give it um, the gameplay a little bit more variety because it moves a lot faster. Um, and whereas these smaller objects are pretty easy to either jump on or jump over uh, as the game gets faster. See, I was just pushed over by a zombie. So that knockback effect um, that I was talking about before is uh, the last part, the last addition I made to the game um, and is what I've used to uh, be able to give the, the player a little bit um, a wiggle room in, in, that, in their ability to continue playing the game even when they're uh, knocked back by an object. Before, uh, without the knockback effect, then the object would just push the player off the screen um, and they would, wouldn't be able to recover from that. Uh, some last minute, some, some details. Um, that could use further improvement. Like I said, uh, the knockback effect could use some um, more tweaking, um, which I didn't have time for, but I felt um, up to this point uh, works pretty well. Um, there's that limitation of being um, knocked back uh, when the player begins a jump. Um, and I was able to dampen it uh, enough to make it reasonable I would say, um, at least early on, to be able to recover from. Um, but then as soon as the game gets slightly faster, then that becomes less and less feasible. Um, so that I played around with those parameters uh, a bit and got it to where I think it was reasonable. Um, something more sophisticated perhaps could be done um, to give the player a little bit more um, wiggle room when the game gets a bit faster, but I think um, for the moment it works okay <clears throat> and works for the game. As you can see, the, the game's difficulty will um, reset 
each time the player is killed. Um, all right, that's about it. Um, I had a, a good time learning Unity. Uh, this is basically my first uh, real game. Um, I had a good time, and uh, Unity is a very powerful system. Uh, I hope to learn more, and uh, hope you enjoyed or, this video and learned something from it. All right, thank you.